Are, are you relaxed or is it stressful for you um, this day? I'm about to relax this moment here. I'm going I'm to go from stress okay. to relax in a 10 second period. Okay, perfect. Ready? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Anthony, what would you do today if your friends hadn't asked you in 1983, hey, come along, mm -hmm. rap to our music? Wow, that's a scary movie. It's a scary movie. It could be a, a bum walking down the street talking to himself with uh, strange clumps of dirt about his chest hair. I just don't know. I mean, I, it's a, it's, it is kind of a scary concept to me because it's been so fulfilling and joyful and adventurous to be with my team for all these years. And it's afforded me so many experiences that I can't imagine my life without. If, an, if it was a positive spin, maybe, just maybe, I would be a hardworking writer, you know, smoking a pipe next to a fire somewhere in northern Michigan. But if it was a nightmare journey, I, I could be six feet under. Okay, so it was a good choice then. It was a good choice. Okay. It was some nice destiny. Okay. If you compare those first years in the Chili Peppers band and the time now, yeah. what did you bring to the band then and what do you bring to the band now? Something similar, I think. Yeah, what, what, I, what I contribute is similar. The energy is similar. Um, you know, I'm still the guy who goes wherever I may be and tries to find the right poetry to make this music take on a, a new facet, a new face. I try to find a good rhythm, an uplifting tone, um, energy, just pure energy. And, you know, it's, it's chemistry. It's like you have this very interesting collection of elements, but it, it needs another element to turn it into what it is. And I think we all contribute that. You know, it would be a little flat without any one of us in there. If, it, if we didn't have Chad, it'd be a little flat. We, we need his element. And same with Flea and Josh. You named the chemistry. Um, I got the impression that you and Flea, you are the core of the band. Uh, you are the founding members, so to say. Chad came a little bit after, and Josh, yeah, he's the young guy. But um, what would you say, how did the chemistry between you and Flea change over the years, over those 33 years? Not that much. I mean, we're a little bit wiser, a, a little bit kinder. But the, the, the brotherly rub is still the same. You know, we still get under each other's skin. We get on each other's nerves. But we also have a, a very kind of creative and productive competitiveness that has been beneficial. You know, if, if he sees me doing something well, he wants to do a little better and, and in the same, like a, it, but in a nice way, in a loving way. Not like I want to squash you, but, you know, I want to lift you up. Like brothers from another mother, so to say. Yes. Maybe even the same mother we just got mixed up. I don't know. Okay. Um, concerning friendship, I got the impression when listening to your new album that um, this album is really a, an album about friendship because the sounds that you used, your poetry and all the instruments that are intertwined and interwoven and sometimes get against each other and sometimes are based on each other. It's mm. like a friendship. Is, it, is this a right um, observation? Always. I mean, that's, that's kind of been our secret weapon since the beginning, is, is friendship and, you know, rub, rubbing our sounds against each other. Um, you know, I, I depend on those guys more than they depend on me because a, lot of, a, few, a few important songs have come just from the vocals, you know, like Under the Bridge or Californication, started off with just me singing and nothing else, and they added the instruments. But most of the time, they jam, and they find a groove or some chord changes that, that I want to jump on. So I, I need them to lay this, this magic out so I can, you know, brush my poetry against it or whatever you want to say. Um, and it is to do with friendship and it is to do with teamwork and that's why I feel like this record is um, more evolved than our first record with Josh which I like that was a positive experience we had a great tour and but this one we know Josh better and we've toured with him before so the relationship is deeper and we just know him better and it's it's more fun to make music together now 
actually, you can hear this on the record. That's exactly right. That was my impression. You found each other more than in the recent album, the um, I'm With You yeah. album. Um, it takes a minute. Yeah, it takes a minute. Yeah. Um, the good thing is, first, when I heard the first single, um, um, <laughs> sorry, the name. Uh, Dark Necessities? Yeah, Okay. sorry. Um, I, I thought, well, okay, this is kind of a We Are Older Now song with a little bit mm -hmm. of funk, but not too much. But then I heard Detroit, Go Robert, and this Ticonderoga, and I thought, wow, the chilies from the 80s are back. When you jam and when you write a song, do you have this as an aim? Oh, we have to get a bit more of the 80s in? No, no. I mean, we try to stay in today. Um, but we also never limit ourselves, and anything is possible. And we like fast things, and we like slow things, and we like you know, so-called mature pieces of, of music, if that's what you want to call dark necessities. To me, it sounds pretty raw when Flea comes in on his bass. It's just, you know, a man beating the shit out of his instrument. Um, after all these pretty piano chords and things, then it's just, you know, let me crack this thing in half. But this Ticonderoga, for instance, uh, was quite shocking to me when I heard the music. You know, I, I missed a day at rehearsal. I showed up, and they're playing this, you know, blazingly fast, hard, da -da -da -dun, da -da -da -dun, da -da -dun. and I was like, I have no idea, how, what am I supposed to sing on that? And then I took it home and sat with it for a couple of days, and, and then the, the melody came flying in through my, my window. Um, and now it's, I can't wait to play that one live. You know, this Ticonderoga and, and Detroit both scream to be played live in front of an audience. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, that's right. Um, I heard that, um, yeah, um, Danger Mouse, he was a, quite an influence in writing the songs. As you are, um, I heard Flea telling um, the audience that uh, there was not so much jamming songwriting going on, but just going to the studio and um, making songs up out of nothing, so mm -hmm. to say, with the producer. Yeah. Um, was this kind of a difficult experience for you? Was it so different? Did you have to get adjusted? To so it? different. It did take some adjusting, but it was fun. And it's just another way to create. And, it, and we wanted something new. So I would say two thirds of the record was probably based on our typical jamming together style. And one third was just invented literally on the spot. So wake up with nothing, make something, they would give it to me and the next day I would have to sing it. So I would have to write as soon as possible. You know, it, I would get it late at night and I'd wake up early in the morning and listen and go, okay, I, I, I think I know what this song is about. And write, 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 and when I would go sing it, that's the first time I ever sang it, and it's still on the record. So I didn't have a chance to practice. And, and some days I would come in with what I thought was okay, and, uh, and Brian would say, it's not great. Go home and try that one again. Um, and that was different, but I also appreciated it because you know, it pushed me just enough to maybe find something that I didn't know was there. And uh, like in the chorus of, of Go Robot, I had what I thought was a pretty cool chorus. I was like, I like this chorus. Like it sticks in my head and he was like, eh, eh it's okay. I, th I think there's something better. And I had a hard time believing it, you know, for about a week. And then he sat me in the studio and he said, just start singing. And I was like, what do you mean just start singing? He's like, I'm gonna play the music and you just start singing, whatever comes to your head. And there's an engineer, and there's Danger Mouse, and there's guys, you know, working in the office next door. And I'm like, okay, I'll just start singing. And we ended up figuring out what the chorus was for Go Robot, and very different, very like you got to make it up on the spot. Not so much re relaxation that a poet needs normally. Well, we were looking for melody at that point, and and sometimes once you find the melody, the words will just jump into place. Um. A big topic of mine is um, now aging. Aging. <laughs> Nobody believes me if I tell my mother, this guy is 53. She says, wow. <laughs> She's 70 and she says, wow, how does he do that? But apart from that, um, what does aging mean? Why did you tell your mother? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, uh, she hey, mom, get in here. You know how this guy is? <laughs> so, uh, what I want to ask you is, um, how does aging um, influence your creativity? Did you notice some um, changes? Changes? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm still disorganized. I'm still a procrastinator. Um, I still listen to everything around me. Um, you know, when those, when those voices come that have 
cool things to say. I, I try to write them down or record them. Um, it's not so different, you know, yeah. Is there anything that you, it sounds like a very um, uh, dark question, but I want to ask it to you. Um, is there anything left for you that you want to do musically before you die? Write a bunch of good songs. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get old, it doesn't get tiresome, it doesn't get it that's kind of a never ending thing. The writing songs is can last your whole life. It's like Cy Twombly kept painting beautiful masterpiece paintings until he was eighty years old and then he died. And I can see why, because It feels good to write a song. It feels great. It feels so nice to go home at night going, ah, that's a pretty good song. Not a bad song. So <clears throat> I, would, I would like to keep writing songs because I think it's the possibilities are endless.